So John's going to describe in highly uh, metaphoric language a filthy religious prostitute. Now, he's going to describe, I want you to understand, as he's talking about this woman, he's not really talking about a woman. He's going to explain that to us. He's talking about a world religious system uh, that comes into being uh, during the last days. And he sees it as, uh, of all the terrible things that we have seen and all the terrible things that occur during the book of Revelation, God says this one is an abomination. <laughs> really. Of all the stuff, I mean, we had demons flying around the place. We had the devil himself. We have the Antichrist. And he stops and he says about this particular woman, this is an abomination to me. Because what is it except it's a religion that is trying to take the place of Jesus Christ. It's a, if you would, a Christianity without Jesus in it. You can't have Christianity without Christ. Yet we see that happening quite frequently today. Most of what you would call the major Christian religions today, uh, what they call the mainstream uh, denominations, do not have Christ in them anymore. Uh, it, the, the Jesus that they speak about is not the Jesus of the New Testament. The Jesus they refer to is a Jesus who performed no miracles. That's most of it. How did Jesus prove that he was the Son of God? He said, listen, I'm going to prove to you I'm the Son of God. Here, I'm going to raise this woman's son from the dead. Here, I'm going to raise this young lady from the dead. Here, I'm going to raise Lazarus after four days. I'm going to raise him from the dead. And by these things, you're going to know that I am the Son of God. But modern religion today, modern Christianity today says, Jesus, if you take the miracles away from him, you're probably closer to the truth. Oh, and all that preaching stuff about I am the way, the truth, and life. Let's get rid of that too. Let's get rid of that idea that God, that Jesus is God. So you have a... Christianity today that does not have Christ. And this is the foundation stones for what we're going to have during this tribulation period that God calls an abomination. It's a Christless Christianity, so to speak. So John is going to describe this lady to us. He's going to, first of all, give us some information about her. This harlot of Revelation. You might as well get used to her. And so he, the information he wants to give us is found in the first six verses. Along with that, though, we read this one, the, her corruption. She is very, this religion is a very, very corrupt religion. And one of the seven angels who had just poured out those vials, one of those seven angels had come to talk with me, saying to me, come here. I will show you the judgment. It already happened. This already happened. This isn't about to happen. This, listen, you just saw this, and let me explain to you what it is that you just saw. Let me show you the judgment of the great harlot sitting on many waters. Now, many waters has to do with a group of people. It's a large body of peoples, different bodies of peoples from different places. Whenever you see the, remember we saw the Antichrist come up out of the sea. That is, he came up out of a group of people. All major empires come up out of groups of peoples. And so that's what he's saying to us. So this religion is a culmination of the people of the world. Everybody said, hey, this is a great idea. I can get behind that. And so her ability to come up from all these many waters is the fact that the world gets behind her. You know, the world gets behind a lot of stuff that we don't realize is bad for us at the time. Germany got behind Hitler and said, man, what a powerful guy. He's going to do us good. Listen, he's putting everybody back to work. Well, he started out doing good stuff. People had no idea what he's about to get them into. But he came up out of a sea of people. And so the same thing, this woman right here, she's going to look like, hey, she's, she's what we need. Yeah, well, you'll see how that goes. She came up out of many waters. Look at verse 2. She commits adultery with both potentates and the people of the earth. She mingles the rich and the poor together. She just has sway over everybody. You got, if you're going to be in religion for long, you've got to have money. You've got to get some rich benefactors or you won't stay in existence for very long. So she mingles the rich and the poor. Everybody in the world is behind this religion, whatever it might be. It says right here, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication and became drank with the, drunk with the wine of her fornication and those inhabiting the 
earth. She's blasphemous in verse 4. Having a cup, a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication, she is utterly materialistic as well. And she had a ray, she was arrayed in purple and scarlet and had girded with gold and precious stones and pearls. This is a gaudy religion. This is a religion that likes to show off its wealth. Probably I wouldn't be a bit surprised if their dog houses had air conditioners. <laughs> Do you hear a lot? Now, here's the problem with this. This is really the um, preaching of today's church. If you go to most t uh, churches on TV, those that can afford it, you're going to hear them preach prosperity gospel. They're going to tell you that, you know, you could speak wealth into your life. Uh, you can, uh, you know, you name it and claim it. That's not new. The Egyptians, way back years and years, go back oh, close to five, six, maybe 10,000 years ago, they had a name it and claim it religion. They believed that the universe, in, uh, again, if you know anything about the Chinese and their feng shui, you paint your door red, and that invites the universe to send wealth your direction. Now, most of you don't have a red door, and you're probably poor. <laughs> if you were Chinese, you'd go home and you'd paint your door red. Why? So that the universe could send you a blessing. And so these preachers today have stolen that same idea, and now they tell us, you know, that you name it, you sp the, the, the world says you speak it out to the universe, and then the universe can send it to you. They simply say you speak it out and let God send it to you. But God and the universe are interchangeable in that because it was a religion started by the world, and they initially said call out to the universe. Paint your door. Invite good luck your direction. And it's the same thing that we're preaching today as a church. No more Jesus isn't held up high. People don't repent. People don't get right with God. People get wealth when they go to church now. That's what they go for. So that I too might be rich. So she is filth but rich. John's going to get caught up checking this out. The woman was arrayed in scarlet and girded in gold. But look at her compromise. She aligns herself with the godless politicians of this world. What's religion doing? It needs the blessing, if you would, of the government. We don't want to pay taxes. We need the government's blessing. So you have to kind of find out what the world wants and start giving it to them. And that's exactly what she begins to do. So notice this. And he carried me away, talking about that angel. He carried me away into the desert by the Spirit. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet colored beast filled with the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. That's the power. Remember, the Antichrist has already come up. So this is that world religion that tied itself with the Antichrist. Remember, the Antichrist has the religion, the, the political leader, the Antichrist, and then it has the false prophet. The false prophet is the religious aspect to it. So we see this religion tied together with the Antichrist, with politics and all of them being powered by the devil himself so this is the thing that gets God most upset is how they're going to try to mimic his religion so I'm carried away to the desert I see a woman sitting on a beast of course we already had that beast described to us earlier and then there but this one's a little different because there's a caption on her head in verse 5 and on her forehead is written and uh, mystery Babylon the great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. Wow, abomination. Now, no, I want you to notice this, her cruelty. She is drunk with the blood of martyrs and that she has murdered. And I saw the, verse six, and I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with a great marveling. So John now is being told the woman represents a religious system. The beast that she was, or the, the beast that you saw was and is not, and is about to ascend out of the abyss and go into perdition. And those dwelling on the earth will marvel those whose names are not 
the only people who are going to marvel at this are those whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. So there are going to be those. Now remember we saw this sort of with uh, Nebuchadnezzar. He is these four empires. And then we saw the Roman Empire which is destroyed. It's put back together with clay and iron mingled in the toes was the Roman Empire. These legs that are destroyed. And so it's probably that reestablishment of, uh, of a similar Roman Empire. Europe's going to get back together and going to rule the world. Uh, we call it the NATO right now. Kind of a rebuilding of the Roman Empire. And so when that comes to pass, people are going to be surprised that it happens. But it will indeed happen. And so the world is going to marvel that this political... Now, once the politics get together, it won't be long before the politics brings along with it its religion. And, of course, the religion is going to be that of the Antichrist, the false prophet, who is going to impress the world with all of its miracle-working powers through those demons who have that ability. So he saw it. They're about to ascend out of the bottomless pit. The beast represents various kings in verse 9. And there was in, uh, uh, let this mind have wisdom. So let's go to the next slide then. We'll see. It. And here is the mind that has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. This religious empire will sit in a city that has seven mountains or seven hills. That's a picture of Rome. Rome has been called the city of seven hills forever. Jerusalem is built on Mount Zion. In Rome, however, you have these seven mountains. So a lot of people from this description or from this verse decide that this is going to be a religion coming out of Rome. And so naturally, in today's standard, most people, most commentators today uh, allude this back to the Catholic Church as being the basis upon which this uh, Antichrist system is built. And uh, so this is how come you hear so much talk about the, uh, the papacy, uh, the pope, uh, and the Antichrist uh, because of this description that comes here. And of course, if you look at them, uh, when John said they were robed in scarlet and purple, the colors of the popes and the colors of the cardinals are purple. So again, it's, it, there, there are some indications given here that people can see. Now, whether it just happened that the Catholic Church picked those things or they're part of it, uh, I don't know. But it's going to be a worldwide outreach. It's going to be a very rich uh, uh, world religion, one that is very uh, ornate and the pictures. I remember when I was a young man coming out of the Catholicism and coming into your Protestant type churches, and you guys got nothing. You got no fancy stuff in your, well, we had gold everywhere in our, our whole altar, huge monuments of gold up there. I mean, you go into a Catholic church and you're whelmed by the beauty. You come here and it's like, wow, y'all uh, like naked and poor, right? So, and that's, remember John stopped and he marveled. Who would have thought that this Christless Christianity could have become so rich using the name of Jesus without having him in it? And we see that in the world, uh, in, in most of its uh, Christian religions today. Very small part of Christianity is still Christian. They still call themselves that, but they are a fake religion, to say the least. And so very quickly, this beast represents various kings with the multi-seven heads and the uh, seven crowns. And of course, the city itself sitting on these seven mountains uh, that this woman sits on. Now, we are told that some of these kings have already ruled, verse 10. And there are seven kings, five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. The one that hasn't come yet, of course, the Antichrist. When he comes, he must continue a short time. We are told earlier it was 42 months. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and of the seven and goes into perdition. So again, you have the... Antichrist coming, you have the false prophet coming. Of course, both of these are going to be judged by God and uh, sent to hell. And so one king will be the most powerful. One of them, of course, that's the Antichrist, is going to be the most powerful king ever because he is going to literally enslave the whole world. The Romans thought they were something. They had everything from Great Britain all the way over to Arabia. This guy is going to have the entire world under him. 
That's massive. So these 10 kings are not yet to rule. Look at this next one, verse 12. One king will be the most powerful. We just mentioned that. And then the 10 kings are to rule. And the 10 horns which you saw are 10 kings who have received no kingdom yet, but will receive authority as kings one hour. With Now the beast gets 42 months. These kings get one hour of his time. But they have a purpose these ten kings. Now notice these ten kings come out of that woman. Or with her, riding with her, right? Yeah. Uh, you really, uh, if I was her, I wouldn't trust them. <laughs> okay. And so the ten horns, in verse 12, the ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom yet, but will receive authority as kings one hour with the beast. And what is their purpose? To destroy the woman. God brings them into power for one hour for one purpose. He is going to use her followers to destroy her. Those that are following her, see how God does that so often? We've, we watched him do this over and over again. He brings up that, those things that man worships and uses that against man. So this religion thinks it needs political power and God is going to use political power against that thing that she thought was so necessary, her political power, her strength, her might, and God uses that against her to kill her off. Look at verses 14 through 18. These will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them, for He is Lord of lords and King of kings. And those with Him are called elect, and faithful. We're with God during this time. Verse 15. And he says to me, the waters which you saw, remember I explained to this a little bit ago, the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these will hate the harlot and will make her desolate and naked and they will eat her flesh and burn her with fire. So the religion and the politicians that are combined together for a while suddenly turn on each other at the very end. And the politics turns on religion. Needed religion to band humanity together, but once it got humanity together, it splits. And there's a fight between the politics and the religion, and the politics eats up the religion. Completely devours it, destroys her. And the ten horns which you saw, I'm reading verse 16 again, which you saw the beast, they ate or hate the harlot and make her desolate and naked, and they eat her flesh and they burn her with fire. Verse 17. For God gave into their hearts to do his mind. This is important to understand that God's in control of all things. It looks like the world is going amok right now. It looks like the world is just running where it wants. It isn't. It is going exactly where God wants it. It, will, it has a destiny with God. This is the destiny of the religions of the world, and they will meet God on this plane. They will have what they want. They will have this political union. They will be powerful. They will be rich. They will rule over man, and they will dictate to man. And then there's going to come an hour when God says, okay, I've given you what you wanted. Now I'm taking it all back. And the politicians turn against the religious leaders and devour them. And then God comes in, the Lamb comes in, and devours the political leaders. And he wins. They make war. See, they, they beat religion. And so now the mighty armies of the world say, look at that, we have wiped out religion. We're pretty strong. So now we can even stop God. And Jesus says, you think so? Come on, boys, give me your best shot. And he says one word, and they're all gone. It's not really a battle. It's not really a war, because Jesus says one word. I'm done. I'm done playing with you. Boom, you no longer exist. And they're cast into perdition, into hell forever. The, the whole point right here is to understand that when you look at the world and things look bad, trust God. When you look at the world and things look good, 
it's a better time to trust God because when things are looking good, then sudden destruction comes. Religion thought, look at what we have done. We've got rid of Christ. We've got our own Christless religion and the world loves us. And then the world turns on them in the final hour and destroys them. And then God destroys the world. Remember, this has already happened. This all took place during the time when those 75 pound hailstones are falling. And the great earthquake that had come and destroyed the world and all the cities of it. For God gave into the hearts of who? Of these wicked people. Remember, God said, I raised the Pharaoh of Egypt so that he might do my will. I hardened his heart because I wanted this opportunity to show him my power, my strength. I needed to do these miracles, so I needed a man to tell me no. That's why I brought him in. And so these religious people who think they're in control have no idea that they're under God's control. God said, I gave into their hearts to do my mind. Here's what I wanted done. So I told them to go do it. They didn't even know they were doing my bidding. But they did what God wanted them to do because that's what God does. For God gave into their hearts to do his mind and to act with one mind. And to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God be fulfilled. This was all God's plan. That this beast and this harlot should reign. And then the harlot should be taken out. And then the beast himself taken out. Until my words fulfilled. What's his word? Well, he wrote all this down. John wrote the revelation years ago. But God said, listen, they're going to have control until my very last word. I'm done with you folks. Remember when he said, it is finished, last chapter? And boom, the seven plagues came. Hey, when he says it's finished, it's finished. And the woman that you saw is the great city, which has a kingdom over the kings of the earth. But now she's dead and gone. That woman, that religion that you saw, had power over the kings of the earth. And then one day the kings got tired of her. Though he allows evil to permeate this present world, the new world will have no sin. So he's letting them be in charge now, but there's going to come a time when he's going to call an end to it all. And we want to stay on God's side. You want to make sure you're reading your book and you're practicing the religion that he gave you to practice. You don't want to practice the world's religion. We're not looking for wealth and for riches. We're looking to be servants to Jesus Christ because we want to have that mark on us. So when Jesus comes, we're sure to be protected. Remember, all through this, and we've been reading it, God promised, I'm going to protect my people. I'm going to protect my people. I'm going to protect my people. Seven vials coming. Don't worry. God's got you protected.